Our scripture text on this Christmas Eve is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the first seven verses. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Corinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. This is the word of our Lord. If I were to ask you to complete the sentence, Christmas is, what would you say? And I know many of you would have things right on the tip of your tongue, and you would say things like, well, Christmas is family, or Christmas is about traditions, or Christmas is about um, decorations. You'd each one have a, a unique answer. Some of you would go to the religious answer, thinking because I'm the preacher, you'd want to hear. I'd want to hear that, you know. So you'd say that Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you, there's a certain age at which Christmas is all about the presents. Am I right? I mean, there's a certain age where there's a magic about the presence of Christmas, the, the kind that have bows on them and, you know, the kind that Santa Claus bring. And, and some of you, if you think about it in your life, there might be one or two Christmases you can remember or more where some special gift that you receive stands out. Something, some present you receive that just, it made your Christmas and it made a memory, it made an impressionable memory in your mind and it's been a part of your life ever since. I was thinking about that because I was with some people and they were saying, you know, what, what's the best gift you ever got for Christmas? And for me, I, I don't know how old I, I don't know if I was eight or nine years old, and I got a bike for Christmas. I can still remember what it felt like. And it, the, the thing is, it was such a surprise because when I, when I sneaked a peek at about 2 in the morning, it wasn't there. But, but later it was. When we went in in the morning, there was a bike. And, and I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was a, like a, a big bike, a, like a 10-speed a grown-up bike, you know, and I was a kid, and I couldn't even reach the pedals when I sat in the seat, you know. But it didn't stop me from riding all day long. I rode, I was the happiest kid in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I mean, I rode that bike all over Baton Rouge. Uh, didn't even bother me that I fell seven or six times um, that day. That's the way we say it in Baton Rouge. Instead of six or seven, we say seven or six. I don't know why. But uh, I rode that bike all over the place, and there was so something about the unexpected joy of that gift and how it made me feel that was just special. You ever receive a present like that that just made you feel special? It made you feel so good, and I know some of you probably are dancing around in your minds right now thinking about those special Christmas gifts that you receive. You know, at some point, it really is about the presents, the kinds with bows on them, the gifts that really make Christmas special. But why? Why do we have this tradition of presents? It's almost like you get an extra birthday thrown in your year, you know? It's like you get a, this extra, extra um, just bonus that comes to you some of you get bonuses for Christmas, you know? Um, but, but, you know, you just get this, like, it just happens. It's not because of anything you've done. You just, you know, it's just Christmas. So our whole culture is, is, revolves around Christmas at this time of year. And you can get, you know, you can get cynical about that, but, about how commercial it is, but why does it happen? 
I mean, why do people buy gifts for people that they love and friends and, and coworkers? Why do people do that? Why do people go to such extremes at Christmas that they would stand in long lines and they would fight traffic and they would drive halfway across town to find just the right present? Why do people cook and bake and, and, and throw parties and, and have all these, these events around Christmas? What's the purpose of all of this? And you can, again, you can get cynical about it and say it's all crass and commercial. But why do we do it? You know, the average American last year spent more than $950 on Christmas. That's with hundreds of millions of people, if not billions of people around the world celebrating Christmas. That's like gajillions of dollars. Is that even a word? I'm not even sure if that's a word, but it seems like it ought to be a word. You know, gajillions. It's a lot of money spent. Why? Why? If you think about it, it's all out of love. I mean, that's really the heart of Christmas. It's, it's really a heart of love. It's people go to extremes. People do things for others simply because they want to. Because they want people to feel special. They want people to feel blessed. So why do we do all of that? It's really because of the birth of a child over 2,000 years ago. His presence is what all the other presents are all about. His presence in our world, God's gift to us of his son, is what all this fuss is about. And, And thank God we have Christmas. I mean, what would the world be like if we didn't have Christmas? Some of you were just ready for Christmas to be over you know, but thank God we have Christmas. It's an amazing gift that God has given to us. And, and, and Luke tells us the story of, of the birth of Jesus, and it happened at, at such a strange time. I mean, it didn't happen at an expected time when you'd think that something would happen. It didn't happen where you would expect something like this to happen. It's in a back, backwards country in a place out of the way, nowhere, a young couple who are homeless, who give birth in a cave or a barn with the animals. And it's in the middle, as Luke tells us the story, that the Emperor Augustus has declared a registration. You know what a registration is, don't you? It's a census. You know why you have a census? Taxes. It's a, the King James Version had this one right. When the King James Version translates, a taxation. There was a new tax code. <laughs> and the Emperor Augustus had declared this new tax. And I'll tell you something. The Romans, when they taxed, it was not good for anybody under their authority. And especially if you were... Jewish and you were living in the biblical lands, it was not a good thing. It was not a good thing. The empire that controlled them was now taking more from them. And they they didn't know what to do. But but here's this good news announced in the midst of this to Mary and Joseph that that there's this gift that's given to the world, this gift of a Savior, Christ the Lord, who is born to this couple. And the good news that's pronounced by the angels to the shepherds and to, to, to the others there is that this child will bring salvation. He will bring light into the darkness of this world. Matthew calls him Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Have you ever received a gift like that? Can you think of a time in your life that you've received a gift that was more special than that? I mean, you want to talk about presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. 
But the Bible wants to talk to us about the greatest gift ever given, God's presence with us. God with us, Emmanuel. And, and you know, if we take that to heart, that's the most incredible gift that we can imagine, that God is with us. That means that God is with us when we're sad, and God is with us when we're celebrating, and God is with us when everything goes our way, and God is with us when everything goes wrong, and God is with us on those Christmas Eves when our life is great, and God is with us when our, on those Christmas Eves when our life is just falling apart. I love the, the song that our Zimbabwe congregation sings called Emmanuel, and they sing these lyrics. As we sit here in this very place, God is with us. Dreaming away in our sleep, God is with us. In the world out there, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Partaking in festivities, God is with us. In schools, at our jobs, God is with us. In our joyous moments, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. In the wake of grave illness, God is with us. In bondage and bondage, in incarceration, God is with us. In times of emotional turmoil, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. My greatest prayer for you is that you would receive that gift of God's presence this Christmas Eve. Because it changes everything. About 10 years ago, my father was in the hospital, and it was a Father's Day, and I remember I, it was a Sunday Father's Day, and I preached a sermon, and I told a story in that sermon about how much I admired my father, and I, I walked out of church, and we got in the car, and we went to a restaurant to, to go grab a quick bite to eat, and I got a phone call. It was my sister who was down in Houston where my father was in the hospital and, and she said, something's happened. He's, he's coded. And we thought he was going to get out of the hospital that day or the next day. And he'd taken a turn for the worse. And he was, he said, they're trying to resuscitate him. They're trying to bring him back. But, and she was sitting there with my mother and, and, and she said, please say a prayer for us. Would you pray for us over the phone right now? And I, you know, I'm supposed to be the pastor in the family. I'm supposed to be able to have the words and say the words, you know. I had nothing. You ever been at a place where you had no words? I mean, you had, you just, you couldn't say anything. And that's where I was in that moment. And I just said, I, I have no words. There was this awkward silence. And she said, I'll call you back. And then I, it hit me. I'm sitting there and I'm like, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, that's the word I have. So I called my sister back. She said she's just putting her, her phone back in her purse when the phone rings back. And I said, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. That's my prayer. God is with us. And you know, somehow God's presence has always been enough when our loved ones die when we're hurting when we're celebrating when we're rejoicing God's presence is somehow enough for us and the birth of this child gives us that, that gift and and when we have Emmanuel, when, when Emmanuel is in our hearts, God with us, when we have that, that knowledge of Christ in our hearts, it changes the way we pray. We no longer have to pray that we please God be with so-and-so or please be with me when I'm facing this tragedy, this, this difficulty, this challenge. No, I know God is already here. God is already with the person I'm praying for. I can pray, God, help the person I'm praying for, see your presence, feel your presence. Help me as I'm facing this challenge to know that you are here with me. I don't have to ask God to be present. God is present. It changes the way you think. 
when you know that God is present with you no matter what. And it changes the way you act, the way we behave, the way that we treat one another, the way that we live life with each other because we know that God is with us and God with us is enough. The birth of this child changes everything. Can you imagine what this world would be like without Christ? It's difficult enough with Christ, right? But can you imagine what this world would be like without Christ? And that's why we, we gather and we light candles and we celebrate this night because we know that God is with us. In the birth of this child, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen.